Good morning. Good morning, Harlan. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. How are you guys? We're good. We're, we got you live here. And uh, where you been? You've been busy. What have you been doing on your Thursday mornings that uh, you haven't been able to join us on uh, Benzinga's pre-market prep? Well, in winter, I'm kind of a bass backwards type of guy. I uh, kind of take my time off in winter versus summer. So, uh, But yesterday, or no, last weekend, we were at the uh, Indy 500 of snow. The Indy 500 of snow. Okay, so yeah. what is that? Well, I'm teaching my kid how to be a really good stock trader because he uh, he races the uh, Amsoil Snowcross Series. So uh, all winter we race every weekend. A li- he race cars? Snowmobiles. No, he's oh, a snowmobile, snowmobile racer. How old is he? Uh, just turned 18. Okay. and he's Do you do the puddle jumping too there, Harlan? Oh, my gosh, puddle jumping? How about uh, 40 miles an hour, 40 feet high, and about 90 feet distance? Oh. Two, three times a lap. You're all so, risk. See what I mean about making him a good stock trader? You know, uh, because what's, what's it all about? It's about managing your fear. Because there's a lot of fear in that. Does he ever, wow, that like crazy. That. Does he ever put you on the back it, of that thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of that thing. <laughs> wow. Oh. I, I literally am afraid of that sled. It's that fast. All right. Let's get to the markets here. You betcha. Uh, S&P is trading up 10 points here, 36.50. Uh, I guess the ECB is uh, delivering on their promises. Uh, why don't we start with just uh, your quick overall market assessment here? All right. Well, you know, you look at both the indexes, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, and you can kind of see, you know, going into today, they really haven't gone anywhere since the beginning of November. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're pushing three months of a range-bound trade. Um, S&P, let's call it, uh, you know, 1975, 1990 on the support side to uh, retest of the highs. What was that, 2088-ish? Something like that. On the uh, resistance side so right now you're kind of in the middle of that range bound chew you alive trade uh that we're building and one could say this is you know your base building here you're going sideways or you know off of the year-end highs all you've done is pull back uh off those highs to a support level at the 1990-1975 zone and here we are uh making a decision whether we're going to go up and retest those highs again uh, right now, you know, you've got a little bit of resistance right at uh, 2046, which is the 50-day moving average. So, you know, we got to bust through that with conviction, um, meaning have you noticed what our markets do? They spike, and then what happens? They sputter, just like the IBB, just like uh, Biogen. A lot of these names, you know, they'll try and break out. They Break into a new high by a little bit. We are bit. busting out to the upside here. Right now, we are man. spiking. We what's are what's the Draghi saying? saying? Is Draghi saying that they're buying S and P futures or something here? <laughs> Draghi saying enough. ECB will buy sixty billion euros per month. Sixty? You just raised another ten. No, it was Yeesh. sixty yesterday, wasn't it? I thought it was, it? I thought no, it was, it was fifty it, this morning. I, th- I thought it was fifty. Yeah, it was fifty I think. yesterday. ECB, but now you're saying 60? ECB has decided to buy $60 billion in assets wow. per month. Oh, my gosh. Says they will buy. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Says they will buy until they see sustained inflation improvement. Wow. Pedal to so the metal. Chewy forever over in Europe, too. You know, when uh, we started the show, I was kind of just in jest. I said, you know, I really don't see any resistance up here until 5175, very minor levels. And look at this. We have just cut through the 39. Now we're working on the 40 handle. 5175, that was your high on January 13th. Uh, getting a little breather here at 2047. So. Wow. Wow, what a move. But uh, Harlan, are you still, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you there, but when the spoos jump like 10 points, we got to we gotta bring it up. So <laughs> right. now coming back down to earth a little bit. So uh, how'd you handle that break under 2,000 yesterday? Uh, 
the thing that I know, or not yesterday, last week, what I noticed about it was, is I, you know, I kept on waiting to get down to the 1960 level, 1965. We had a couple lows of there from December, and when it, you know, when it wouldn't get there, it stopped ahead of resi- uh, ahead of that support. You know, I kind of got an inkling to, you know, try it a little bit more from the long side here, but. That's history. What are, you, what are you looking for on the upside? Is there anything in the S and P cash that uh, sticks out to you on the upside? Uh, just resistance. You know, twenty eighty eight. That's resistance. Uh, buy support, sell resistance. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So you know, here we are. We're busting through, and uh, it's just a matter of now. Uh, it's your choice if you want to chase it. You know, after after it's already made a really quick pop, or you want to let the dust settle from the reaction, uh, and then look to pick off things. So if you're there, you have positions. Guess what? You're participating. Hey, great, you're on your way, assuming it sticks. By the same token, um, you know, when you get this kind of hype like this, just let the reactionary dust settle, and then look to pick off names because we've seen it time and time again. You know, they'll pop stocks, and then, you know, maybe an hour or two later, they just kind of settle back down, and then you can pick them off if you want to start to go long. So um, I'd watch resistance, 2088. We'll have to see. Let's see what happens after this reactionary dust settles, because we could be on our way. We are bouncing all over the place on these S&P futures. They're trading handles wide here right now because we're 14 and a half. We're up 13. We're just bouncing all over the place. Incredible movement here right now. We're just up. We just lost five points since I started speaking that sentence. So now we're back up. Now we just rallied four <laughs> points here too. There is just action all over on these S&P futures right now, trying to find their home, trying crazy. to figure out how to digest this all of a sudden $60 billion from Draghi. So incredible yeah, movement means, here. You know. I mean, it's it's so all over the board and so in milliseconds that it's like, you know what, how do, how do you trade that? You know, Let's just talk. let those reactionary people just do their fighting and then let things settle and then, you know, make your uh, make your bet. Do you think if this any, is all just... Watch you. He might have lost Dennis. We lost? We can grab him back. Okay. All right, uh, Harlan. Let's uh, let's go to some individual issues here. Uh, is there anything that you picked up last week, perhaps, on the decline? That uh, you know, it's starting to get itchy. Kind of feel like the circus is on town. Something that you might be lightening up on, or any potential shorts out there in the market. I'm not really seeing any shorts. You know, throughout this whole pullback off their highs since first of the year, I've been seeing more orderly structure. Uh, in in that pullback, which is good. You know, you want stocks to pull back in an orderly manner versus a violent manner. Um, Let's talk airlines. I'm not seeing really any uh, circus in town as of yet. You know, some of these airlines, you're a little bit late to the party. Uh, But how about uh, VA? VA? Virgin Airlines, right? Mm -hmm. Virgin America. Okay. All right. Talk us through this one. Well, um, I'm stuck on, my chart is stuck on GC. Ah, okay, well, it's... All right, there we go. Okay. Well, what do you see? You see an issue that since first of the year has been pulling back in a nice orderly manner. Draw a line across uh, 37 and a half. You can kind of see there's a support zone there on the uh, the daily chart right there. And uh, so, you know, you've got good support at 37 and a half. Line up your tops off of the uh, December highs, and you've got a nice orderly pullback off highs. So here's a name that uh, hasn't broken to the upside, up, out, and gone, uh, and chasing a bus like some of those other airlines are. So, uh, you know, there's one that you might want to look at. Pretty easy stop. Breaks 37 and a half. Uh, you might want to decide to walk away. Uh, so there's your uh, fluctuation risk. If you're buying it right here, like 37 and a half, you say, that's it, I'm out of here. Brianna, you want to, Dennis says the call keeps dropping. I'm, I'm here, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're back, okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I snuck in, you guys just keep hanging up on me, you don't like me, I think. All right, you... you... I know Harlan likes me, so I know he wasn't the one hanging up on me. Har- Harlan, okay, give us a couple stock picks here, because I know you've always got a lot of stuff on your radar there. You're always looking at those pretty charts, that, you know, the stocks are just pulling back off those highs and starting to turn. What do you got for us? 
Well, you know, we just talked about uh, VA uh, in the airline space. Um, how about restoration hardware, RH? There's really? another issue. You know, they run these things up, and, you know, after they run them up, they digest those gains, two forward, one back. You know, and they gapped it uh, back in, uh, know, let's call it uh, early December, gapped up. And sure enough, you're digesting that gain and you pull right back to the 50-day, and it's uh, pulling back in an orderly manner, albeit uh, it's an aim that has big daily ranges. So uh, keep that in mind. It's not for the faint at heart. So there's a couple right there that look pretty decent. You know, you buy the break to the upside um, off of your lineup, your tops. When you break that to the upside, uh, that's your entry, or you take it right in here uh, and just set a stop of any break. Uh, of the whole pattern uh, off of the uh, from the gap up, so you can see it's you know it's a nice pullback off highs in a stock that's in an uptrend, and all you've done is fill the gap uh, created from earnings. Uh, so we'll find out. Couple stocks coming out of the chat here for you from uh, Rob Hood. He always likes to get your opinion here. Uh, the first awesome. one, ZTS. Uh, here's a stock. Uh, just kind of consolidating here is this uh Dennis, would this one be on your itchy radar here and uh harlan let's get your thoughts on it Z well if you're a breakout buyer you're waiting for it to break out of a base okay so just for the most part just draw a line across let's just call it uh 42 and uh 45 breaks out of 45 there's your trade break out of the base for a breakout buyer um the pullback off highs pattern as you can see uh, they ran it all the way from uh, October into, you know, let's call it the beginning of December, and what do you notice? It got extended above the 50-day, and what did it do? All it did is pull back off its highs uh, mid-December, and that was your trade. Uh, yeah, so, you're looking at that 45 level. That has been defended very well. All-time high, 45.24. Mm -hmm. uh, All-time closing high, a little bit higher than that, 44.88. So, Keeping a real close eye. I, I think the way I like I look at some of these, Rob Hood, is you know I'd really like to see it get above 45 and uh, you know continue in the next leg up, but uh, that's posing as good resistance. Um, also, Harlan thoughts on C T A S. Anything on that? That it was that Cintas. Oh, yeah, ooh, look at that chart, Dennis. That looking at you, huh? Oh, it's been climbing back up. The problem is, which is my opinion on that, is that you're coming right back up to where you had resistance before. So um, I don't know. What do you think, Carlin? Uh, I, same thing. You know, I'll have to agree with you. I mean, you know, I have a saying, you know, if you have to squint to see a pattern, it's not there. The moment I pulled this up, I said, all right, 80s resistance. All it's done is pull back off its highs to 76, and now it's working its way back up to 80. So what if it goes to 80, maybe ekes a little bit higher and rolls over? Well, the what to watch out for would be that could be a double top. But right now it's in a clearly defined uptrend. I wouldn't be a buyer of it right here um, simply because, you know, your entry, your low risk entry point was at the beginning of the year once it hit its peak and pulled back to the 76th zone. Harlan, before you know, it we let have a lot of scale, it's not bad. Before we let you go, I just want to see if you're getting down and dirty in the oil patch yet. Uh, you know, crude here trying to rally, and uh, you know some of these stocks have pretty hefty dividends. Is uh, you just thought uh, you staying out of the way on this one, or uh, is there something in the oil patch that's catching your interest? Uh, we do own one, and that is uh, Silica S L C A, which is an inverted. CTAS chart. If you want to want to get real, why do you like this one? Funny with it, just because it's building well, this base here. No, it put in a double bottom, broke to the upside, and launched. Yep, and it's kind of a slow launch. So, boy, this thing was back at uh, 70 bucks here, now under 30. We'll keep an eye on that one. We've been on the line now, here. Now, take that chart in your mind. Take that chart in your mind and okay. invert it. Do I mean I got to stand on my head? Hold on a second here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think you've got to do a little bit more of that. But, if you know, that's a double bottom, and then it broke to the upside. Now, if CTAS is maybe putting in a double top, what are you going to be looking for there? A break to the downside. So, you know, 
So there's two chart patterns that are opposing each other. Okay. All right. Harlan Pyen. He's from a technical a co-founder standard. of All About Trends, uh, taking, uh, uh, I guess, a day off from snowmobile racing to join us here on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Great talking to you, Harlan. We'll have you on again soon, okay? You betcha. See you next week.